I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, is brought to you by Go to Meeting with HD Faces. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, netcast. <laughs> I know every time I start the program, you go, What is the, what's up with the hands and the sticking your fingers in the air and all those kinds of things? I don't know. It just seems like what you're supposed to do when you do a strange netcast. And I am a bit strange. Anyway, um, I have my Logitech 910 webcam here. Yes. And I'm actually using the microphone off the webcam. So this is actually kind of going to be a test of its capabilities to do it just a native. Go native with Dr. Bill. <laughs> Yes, well, as you can see over there, that's my normal studio office thing, whatever you want to call it. But I'm lazy today. So I'm going. Yeah, okay, Fred. I got it. Anyway, Fred, as you know, is the guy that puts the stuff up on the screen, makes snide comments. But anyway, we'll let him slide this week. Um, so we're proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Yes. And this is Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, the netcast that asks the question, why? <laughs> like, why are you watching? Because you're bored. No, I'm being silly. Some of you watch because you like to see a very strange bearded fellow talk about computers and technology. We certainly have that. I had one guy that sent me a comment on YouTube that said, Santa Claus talking about computers and tech. Dude. <laughs> hey, I'll take whatever I can get fan-wise. You know what I'm saying? I got stuff over here falling all over the place. Let me get this untangled. This is a Roku remote. Yes. And I use my Roku quite a bit. I also have an HDMI remote, a new HDTV remote, a soundbar remote, a direct TV remote, and what is this? This is a Blu-ray player remote. So on the arm of my chair here, I have no room to put my arm. <laughs> it's just an observation. But anyway. Um, so. I was going to talk about several things. Let's get right to them. And that is, of course, Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L -L dot TV. We're going to be talking about the stuff that I found this week on the old the old internet, interwebs thing that's out there with all the electrons flowing over them. Anyway, the first item we have is a hint and or tip for you. Those of you, well, these things are really beginning to annoy me. <laughs> Those of you that like to do things on the web, like RSS feeds. Now, RSS feeds are really simple syndication. That is at least one opinion of what RSS stands for. But basically what it is is the ability to allow you to create feeds of items. Uh, for instance, the videos of these shows are done in an RSS feed that you can then subscribe to and watch us every week, which I'd encourage you to do lest you miss out on the oddness that is the DrBill.TV show. So, if you're wondering, you know, I post all my videos to YouTube, 
and I'd love to have an RSS feed of my videos, how can I do that, Dr. Bill? Well, I'll tell you how you can do that. You can use this simple string, and it goes something like this. HTTP colon whack whack G data. That's for Google. G data dot YouTube dot com swack feeds whack API whack users and then your username. So my username would be D R B I L L B A I L E Y, Dr. Bill Bailey. Whack YouTube whack uploads. Yes. I'll put it on the screen, even though it's very long. Eh. Anyway, if you do that, and you open it in Firefox, now if you open it in Chrome, it's just going to look like code, because that's what it is. But in Firefox, Firefox will interpret it into an RSS feed that looks rather cool. Uh, Opera will do that, too. Also, you can use the RSS feed thing that I like to use uh, in... Um, Chrome, which is Slick RSS. It's a plug-in, and it allows you to have your feeds there, and it will display them in a pretty way. Yes. So, next item. It's very cool, actually. You should try it. It's fun. If you have any kind of YouTube feed at all, just create an RSS feed and play with it. Okay? Alrighty. How would you like to own your own Star Wars speeder bike? <laughs> I like this. This is awesomeness. I even say here, how many layers of awesome is this? Dude, Ken has. I would love to have one of these to play with. It looks rather cool. Now I know it's not anti-grav like a real Star Wars speeder bike, but come on, folks. Give me a break. It's still a fun speeder bike that you can play with. It'll go up as high as 15 feet, which is high enough <laughs> for me. But anyway, it's actually being designed uh, with the idea of it being used by the military by a California company called Aerofex. Almost sounds like special effects. Eh, but it's real. And you can fly it and play with it, and it's fun. So check it out. I've got a video on the drbill.tv site that you can play and you can watch it in action. Awesomeness. So have fun with that. I, boy, I tell you, I like it. Yes, I would love to play with one. Hopefully it wouldn't hurt myself. But anyway. All right, let's talk about our awesome sponsor this week, and that is, of course, Citrix Systems. Citrix has a product called GoToMeeting with HD Faces. I've told you about it before. I'm telling you, if you haven't taken advantage of this offer, you really need to do it. Because, you know, as I mentioned in past programs this year, uh, or this summer, I should say, during the summer months, we've been really, really busy. You know, we've been going on vacation. We've been taking trips. You might have even been taking some trips for work. But still, you got to get together on meetings. And, you know, you may have taken a trip to go check out some new widget that your company is going to be using or uh, maybe even buying out or whatever. So you're traveling, and, and then all of a sudden the boss says, dude, I need you in this special meeting. We've got to talk about this. This is important. What are you going to do? Well, if you've got your computer, your laptop with you, or even if you have your iPad with you, cool, you can use GoToMeeting with HD Faces use your webcam, get in on the meeting, and participate and collaborate with the folks there at your company. And wherever you are, even if you're on the beach, <laughs> you can still be involved in the meeting and make those important decisions that have to be made. So do it. Come on. Check out Go to Meeting with HD Faces. I'm telling you, you need to do it now. All you got to do is do what this banner says, special banner, and it talks about going to gotomeeting.com, go to that website, and enter the special code word podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, podcast, and you'll be able to get one month free to use GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It's a special deal, it's a great deal, and you need to take advantage of it right now, okay? 
All right. Now, let's talk about the next item in our drbill.tv blog, and that is that a new version of Audacity is out. I just got this basically last night in an email, and it said, uh, you know, this is what I said. I said, start downloading now. I just got this notice a few minutes ago as I typed it at that point, and it is this. The Audacity team is pleased to announce the release of Audacity 2.0.2, and they give the download link, which is in the show notes, for Windows, Mac, New Linux, and other operating systems. It replaces all previous versions. A significant bug that caused clicks to split lines has been fixed, and there are improvements to several toolbars and some Nyquist effects. See the 2.0.2 release notes for details of the changes. I love Audacity. I use it all the time. So I immediately downloaded it and installed it, and you should too. So check that out. All right, next item. Twitter is joining the Linux Foundation. I like the Linux Foundation because I'm a Linux fan. Yes. And so Twitter is joining it because, I mean, come on, folks. The entire web practically runs on Linux. So Twitter, who is obviously beholding to them, wants to help support the Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation is a nonprofit consortium dedicated to fostering the growth of Linux. And Twitter is joining them to support the organization that is important to us and collaborate with a community that is advancing Linux as fast as we are improving Twitter. Throw in a little commercial for Twitter there while they were saying while they were joining. Yes. So, anyway, pretty neat stuff. I'm glad they're joining it. And whoa! Yes! That is the Geek Software of the Week drum roll, letting us know that the Geek Software of the Week this week is SayPad. SayPad. Now, I will arrange a quick demo of SayPad. Ah, uh, at least I'll try to. I should have done this before I did the show, but anyway, I will type, this is a test in the SayPad box, and then I'll hit play. Well, I heard that, but you probably didn't, because it played it very quietly. But anyway, ah, oh, it's cool. So, so you say, what is SayPad, Dr. Bill? Well, the idea is you can type text into a box, like Notepad. It looks like a Notepad screen. Hit play, and it will repeat it, it back to you in English. Yes, pretty cool. So you can actually take a vast amount of text that you don't want to sit there and read and listen to it. That's pretty neat. So it's a neat little utility, and you don't even have to install it. It just, you know, you click, you run, you play, and it works. It's pretty neat stuff. All right, next item, Microsoft. You already know I'm underwhelmed at that. Well, they have a new logo. I'm really underwhelmed at that, too. It's, it's a perfectly fine logo, I guess. It's red, green, blue, and kind of an orangey yellow. And it says Microsoft. Okay. Anyway, it says, for the first time in 25 years, Microsoft is changing its corporate logo. Okay. Eh. He said that he felt it was a good time to express the newness in the Microsoft logo. That was this guy from Microsoft. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm not thrilled about it. So, but it's, it's news, so I mentioned it. By the way, speaking of stuff, <laughs> you said, Dr. Bell, were you speaking of stuff? Well, kind of. Anyway, we have a Game Master segment. Yes! Game Master and I did it last night, which is why my hair will be all over the place. It was a long, end of a long day. And I will be wearing a different shirt, and I'll be in the studio rather than out here. It, well, it doesn't matter. We recorded it, and it's talking about a continuation of what the Game Master was talking about last time, which is, of course, the imminent release of Guild Wars 2. He got in on a special you know, thing last night at midnight as I record this, and he got to play it basically all night, so he's now asleep. 
because he played all night. But anyway, before that, he gave us his insights into the upcoming release. So let's go to that now. Yes, and well, now it's time for another Game Master segment. The Game Master segment this week is talking about gamishness, I suspect. Gasp. What else would it be talking about? Tacos. Tacos, that's interesting. I can do tacos. I can also do Diet Pepsi. Diet Pepsi. I thought it was do the do. Oh, uh, you can do the do as well, but I, I don't do do myself. I'm not even going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> best to just leave that one alone. No, I am talking about Mountain Dew, which I don't drink, although I have in the past. There you are. <sighs> so. I've never had a Mountain Dew. Uh, it's. I've had Sprite. It's, it's okay. Well, it's kind of Sprite-ish. Sprite-like. So, so, anyway. We have the sun setting, and the light will therefore change. So, I'll warn everyone in advance, he will get darker as the time goes by, and the lights will help a little, but not much. So, there okay. you go. Um, so, yes. what are you talking about? Guild Wars. Wars. Two. Ooh. Yes, I remembered. I'm just so happy. Go ahead. <laughs> so, Guild Wars 2 is literally right around the corner. It's like, here's the corner, take a left. That's actually right from my perspective, but it's a left from yours, so it works. And you're at Guild Wars 2. Because this is August 24th, right? As you record it. Yes, obviously. Why would I, why would I say it was August 24th? When from their perspective, it could be like well, it September could be, the 18th Well, that may be, but it, it could also be a tiny, wimey, time loopish thing. <clears throat> Mayhap. No. Anyway, okay. August 24th, right this second as I'm talking to you, from okay. my side of yes. the time perspective. It's as live uh, as it can be. Yes. And Guild Wars 2 launches, technically, on the 28th. But there is, of course, the pre-order bonus, what are they calling it, early access that lets you get into the game three days early. Which In other words, be... the 25th. Ah. Tomorrow. As in, like, midnight. Midnight tonight. So I know where he'll be tonight exactly. at midnight. He will be gamifying probably for the rest of the evening. Probably morning, for... Or... However you want to think of it. Yes, all weekend, pretty much. Sorry. So we have a window here <laughs> uh, of mere moments to get the Game Master segment done before he is gone from our yes. perspective. Mere moments here translating to so roughly six hours. <laughs> well, but anyway, you know how that goes. Uh, yes. So we've been talking about Good Wars 2, what, two weeks now? Two segments, yes. We skipped in between. Your several. fault. Well, your fault. Yes. Well, your maybe. fault. Anyway, he claims it's my fault when in fact he and his cousin were doing stuff, and I didn't want to interrupt them because I was too kind. Could have done it Sunday. Could have. Probably should have. But we did. Hawkeye, Doctor Pepper. By the way. Oh. Cool. Ah. Anyway. Totally rock. By the way. The movie? Yes. Naturally. Of course. Uh, Hawkeye's in the newborn movie, for those of you that care. Yes, he is the newborn that is not born. He's actually another character. He was not born, he was But hatched. he's been bornified with chemically... Stuff. chromosome stuff. Anyway. Yes. So, Guild Wars 2. Mm-hmm. Last time we talked about more, like, general stuff. So, I guess... Salute. Clearly. General. Uh, <laughs> is that your phone? Yes, the beeping in the background, which you can't hear at all, I'm sure, is my phone dying because I put it on Wi-Fi mode. He's murdering his phone. Eats the battery. He's so, eating his phone. I'm not eating the phone. The He's battery phone. is being eaten by Wi-Fi-ness. The release of Wi-Fi-ification into the atmosphere. So anyway... <laughs> Let's talk combat. Oh, we? Okay, sure. Now that we've gotten eating phones out of the way. Yes. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. What? 
combat. Nick oh. Fury. It was it was a transgression transgression. <laughs> <laughs> transition. Not a transgression. Could be a transgression. Not you... really a transition either, actually. No. Anyway. We were just watching the Stan Lee special thing. Yes. It was, it was good. The anyway. Life of Stan Lee. Life great times. power. What? Oh, yes. That was the name of it, with great power. Oh, clever. Yes. Very clever. So, combat. Straw. Of course you do. Um, so, I now have a straw in my Coke. Which is just fantastic. Just silly. I like silly. Go um, so, Gil... Excuse me. Guild Wars 2's combat is real time for one, which is, you know, good. <laughs> kind yes. of would be outdated if it wasn't. Okay. Um, it's. Here's the thing it has a lot of, like, similarities to traditional MMOs. Yes. Combat, but it's also very different. Okay. How so? Um, well, you know, a traditional MMO, well, you probably don't know, but people know. <laughs> Humans! <laughs> uh, in general, with an MMO like, say, World of Warcraft or, you know, whatever, you have armor, weapons, and then you have a few, like, skills. Well, I say a few. So does Iron Man. Okay. Uh... Just I think actually in World of Warcraft you get upwards of like what thirty skills at a time. People can send you letters and you won't care. <laughs> Don't know nothing um, there. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, so, but the the combat is really all like dice rolls and stuff. Mm -hmm. From what I hear, I've never actually played it. I've never played it. I should say that. I have played City of Heroes, um, Guild Wars the original. A few other games that are more World of Warcraft style, mm -hmm. but they're not actually World of Warcraft, so I can't speak to the actual World of Warcraft. Okay, that's out of the way. Okay. But they're all really just sort of, like in a, um, uh, like a tabletop role-playing game, like Dungeons and Dragons, you'll just kind of say, I attack this orc, and then you roll a die. Mm -hmm. um, there's no real, like, I mean, there is, like, animation, but it's not very exciting animation. It's just sort of, you're sitting there. Yes. But um, Guild Wars 2 aims to change that and make action more dynamic, which is sort of their catchphrase, dynamic everything, mm -hmm. uh, and um, exciting and stuff. So first of all, movement matters. In most MMOs, you can pretty much win by standing still and mashing the same buttons over and over. <laughs> In Guild Wars 2, if you do that, you're dead. Then I would not do well. Well, you can mash buttons while you're moving around if you like, but you do need yes, to move. Yes, but I'd look very silly if I kept jumping around the room while I'm pushing my buttons. It would just be quite odd. Yes, well, <laughs> you and your Donkey Kong. Yes! <clears throat> Give me a hammer! Any place to stand. <laughs> Somehow that works. It's quite philosophical, actually. Uh, anyway... <laughs> Um, well, in Guild Wars 2, uh, for example, one of the ways they're trying to achieve this, there are these, like, circles that appear, that, the, 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 easy for you to say. Not really. Circles that appear on the ground. Yes. Um, that indicate, say, like, where an explosion is about to happen. Um, so if you're fast enough, you can actually dodge out of the explosion radius and dodge the attack completely. You know, no dice rolls necessary. You just dodge. Mm -hmm. um, but if you stand there, you'll get hit. And if you get hit, you'll probably get knocked down. And if you get knocked down, you're probably going to get hit again. Etc., mm -hmm. etc., et until you die. That seems to be... To, to be the, the purpose of all video game stuff is killing people. Or dying. Well... And getting better <laughs> with health points. Which has always seemed odd, because in real life, that doesn't work. Yes, well, that... Th okay. <laughs> True gamers like to kill things. <laughs> it's... That's just a truth of the genre. Of so the keep industry. Them away from small animals. <laughs> but, there are an increasing number of games that don't involve killing things at all. 
and an increasing number of games that do involve killing things also have other options for players who don't want to be killing things all the time. For example, Guild Wars 2 has crafting, which is not anything new. A lot of games have had that before, but it's still... You can actually, in this game, you can do nothing but crafting and get all the way from level 1 to level 80, which is the maximum. Which probably goes back to the Halcyon days of the Tamagotchi where you were encouraged to cause your little small electronic beastie to grow, develop, and form an attachment to you. And if you forgot to feed it, it would die. Now you're just thinking of Neopets. Yes, well, it always manages to get back to dying. <laughs> True. There you go. Uh, well, how does that phrase go? There are only two certainties in life, death and taxes. Yes, and it seems that one party that shall remain nameless is good at both of them. But they won't go there. <laughs> well then. <laughs> Take that as you will. Oh, yeah. Well, so <laughs> so anyway. Our purpose is not to be political. But no, it's not. To talk about video let's, games. Let's, yes. What was I saying? Movements. Death and taxes. <laughs> Death and taxes. So, um, movement is one of the key ways that they're achieving their excitement factor. Mm -hmm. And adding to the movement, by the way, every character has a dodge roll ability. So they can dodge out of attacks and not die. Okay. Um, so one of the other ways is uh, weapon skills. Um, so in a traditional MMO, your weapon would be your weapon. You would whack people with it. <laughs> Uh, and then your like skills... Donkey Kong and his hammer. Naturally. Your skills would be your skills. They would do other things, like, say, maybe create a thunderstorm. I don't know. If you're Thor. Sure. Um, in Guild Wars 2, they are actually marrying the concept of your weapon with your skills. Okay. So you've got ten skills in total. Maximum. Okay. And minimum. Kind of. Never mind. You know... I have yes, a so that. thought, and that is that drinking soft drinks while doing Game Master segments leads to belching. Okay. Which is not necessarily a good thing to do when you're doing a video. Just saying. <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, skills. So... Each weapon for each profession has a set of five skills. Five. That Bad skills. Skizzles. Um, that you can learn by using the weapon. Yes. Um, and so basically what this means is, out of your ten skills, five of them are based on the weapon that you are wielding. And then the other five you choose from a list. You know, of just generic skills. Yes. Um, in t on addition to that, on addition to that, <laughs> yes. Uh, most of the professions, not all, but most, have the ability to switch between two different weapon sets. So you effectively have 15 skills at a time that you can access. Okay. In a manner of speaking. And on top of that, there are weapons in the environment that you can pick up that give you even more different skills. Like very small rocks. Yes, actually, except they're not small at all. Well, if they get too big, then you would need something to pick them up with because they'd be too big. Actually, if they get too big, they magically shrink when you pick them up, but that's beside the point. I like that in a rock. Exactly. You could also pick up a shovel and whack a guy over the head with it. <laughs> or like a, a ale bottle and like bash him over the head. Yes, like in the old cowboy movies. Exactly. Bash things over the head all the time. Mythbusters style. Yeah, Mythbusters. Uh, but uh, interestingly, the other th there are other kinds of things you can do with environmental weapons, such as if you pick up that ale bottle and it's full, you can drink it and get some kind of bonus from it. Uh-huh. Um, like there's one that somehow magically makes you invulnerable to all damage. I'm not sure how that works exactly. But Keep there talking. You go. I'm going to try moving the light. Have fun. Um, so, anyway. And then on top of those five weapon skills, mm -hmm. you've got... F about to say entirely the wrong numbers. 
three utility skills. He's finicking over the video quality as usual. Um, <laughs> your utility skills will be things like maybe like trapping the enemy in a net if you're like an engineer, or um, Spider-Man. Well, or yes, or summoning some kind of nature spirit if you're a ranger. Or since I'm playing a warrior, maybe something like rushing your enemy and knocking them down. You know, stuff. Stuff, yes. Uh, stuff is good. Actually, I think I have you brightened slightly now. Uh, Which is good. <laughs> it keeps me happy. Good for you. Um, and then on top of those skills, you've got your healing skill. Every profession has a healing skill. You're going to keep beating people about the head with a shovel. You need healing skills. Yes, except they're healing for you most of the time. Well, yes. There are exceptions, but most well, of the time. Well, there are times you might want to revive someone who might help you which beat is, someone else over the head with a shovel. Which is, yes, <laughs> which is the other thing. All characters can revive other characters without having to invest a skill in it. They can just do it naturally. Okay. Which is very convenient. Uh, think of it as like CPR or something that you just kind of like kneel down next to them and jump on their chest a bit and they get up. <laughs> And you can feel free to give the CPR for a head wound if you like. Uh, that won't work in real life. No. Just a disclaimer. But it, it might work in Red vs. Blue, however. <laughs> just saying. Well, there are a great many things that might work there that don't work anywhere else in the universe. True. Anyway, um, so, and then that's nine of your ten skills. Your final tenth skill that you unlock at level 30 mm -hmm. is your elite skill, which is usually something completely epic. Like uh, summoning a giant tree int like creature to smash things, and usually you acquire one when you your credit rating gets higher. That's when you get your platinum card. I'm not Elite skills. Platinum I don't, card. I, uh, Never mind. It wasn't. <sighs> wasn't. Didn't really. Didn't work. Work. Did no. <laughs> no well. um, I was trying. <laughs> Valiant effort. Valiant effort. Yes. So, okay. the final interesting thing about that they're doing with combat, well, I don't want to say the final interesting thing, but... Um, is that, you know how in most games, the race you choose to play has a big deal on your combat effect. <laughs> like elf or... Yeah, like, so if you play, like, a uh, big, strong orc, you'll get lots of strength points. If you play the elf, you'll get lots of, like, archery points. If you play the human, you'll usually get a very rounded sort of character. In, <laughs> you know, like, being... Indulging a little too much in the <laughs> ale and, you know, food, you'll get round. <laughs> oh, more, more like being, you know, average at everything. Average. <laughs> That's humans, all right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, what? So in Guild Wars 2, though, all five races can be all eight of the professions with equal skill. There's no differences. The only big difference is Very egalitarian. What? Yeah, you can look it up later. It's a word. I didn't. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't. I, I misheard you. Yes, I may have mispronounced it, but I think I got it close. Close well, enough for government yes, tacos. Yes, for government work, yes. Um, so, anyway, that means that you could play the little tiny Yoda-like Asura and be a warrior and carry around this giant two-handed sword and bash things just as effectively as the big cat-like char that carry around these huge weapons that bash things. Cool. And actually, Yoda did a pretty good job in uh, yeah. the earlier movies, which were the later movies. Which is always confusing to me, no matter how I look at it. It's okay. <laughs> uh, actually, the Oscar are very Yoda-like. They, you know, when they dodge roll, they'll do like a jumping flip, and Which stuff like that. Cool. Very cool. A bit cliche now, but very cool. Well, yeah. But I mean, Yoda could literally be an Oscar. He looks like one, or rather, the Oscar probably look like him. Is more likely the Indeed. case. Um. Anyway. Although technically, I suppose they were both based off of the legends of like the goblins and things and folklore and mythology, and mm, we can get all snooty. Yeah, the I start to say you're kind of you're kind of digressing into intelligentsia. We don't want intelligence in our video games. Mm, would be <laughs> sad. But moving on. Okay. Anyway, um, 
How much time do we have left? Because I don't want to ramble on oh, too long. Oh, we've gone about 20 minutes-ish. Okay. That doesn't really tell me anything. Well, it means we probably should wrap it up. Okay. That's that's a fair enough point to wrap it up There are some on. out there that have gone, what? Really? And they're moving on really themselves, which is not good. Uh, so, yeah, closing comments, I guess. Um, yes. Guild Wars 2's comment, comments. Guild Wars 2's comments will be exciting. Its combat will be exciting and new and refreshing and fun. Which, in a game, is a good thing. Rather. Rather. So, uh, you're going to sweat. <laughs> <laughs> really? Sequester yourself, which is difficult to say, Evidently. Uh, in the uh, game universe, and you will uh, proceed to pummel things with shovels and <laughs> other objects, and then come back and tell us how it all came out in the end. Yes. Yes. Resist the urge to sing the Linkin Park song. In, in the end, you know, it's ah, a song. Yes. It, it, okay. Now it's going through like half your viewers' or heads. Mega Man. Well, you, but that's that wouldn't make sense to reference Mega Man. Either. Close the show out. But it would be random. Okay. <laughs> um. So join the next Game Master segment when we'll talk about something that has to do with the fact that he sequestered himself, <laughs> which does not mean that he gets all gooey and and you know. What? No. Sequester. I, I don't... It's not okay. a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> remember until next time that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.